Hello Internet, welcome back to Unity Shell. Last video we worked on adding a ability to convert things. So you could give it a string or some other data type uh, and we would automatically detect what type was expected, see if we could convert from what we had. Uh, and if we did, then we would automatically convert it and give you the correct type for whatever command you were giving it. In this video we are going to, hopefully, I have not tested this at all, uh, but we are going to hopefully make it so that all enum types are supported. Uh, so we're going to create a enum converter that is going to work on any enum type. Currently it only supports the primitive type. Uh, so I can do a spawn primitive of like test and it's going to just create like a sphere. And so that creates a sphere. And the way that works is it ends up going through this string to primitive converter which converts it to a primitive type. I can show that really quick. It goes here and then hits this switch and then figures out what type it should be. There's a better way to do this, I think, <laughs> and it's going to support all types. So I have this uh, Xamarin workbook open. It's totally empty. Uh, if you don't know what Xamarin workbooks are, I've done a video on it, just kind of walking through the basics of it. But effectively, it's a REPL style editor for C Sharp. So let's say we have a public uh, enum named, uh, what do we want to call this? Shapes. So let's create a shapes enum and we're going to give it a cube and a circle and a sphere and a capsule. And that should be good. So if I do that, it will run, it will do all of that fun stuff. We won't get anything. But then there is an enum.parse. And so what this does is if I give it a type that we're expecting, which we will have, so if I do a type of shapes and I try to parse out say a cube, this will give me cube. Now this isn't cube the string, this is cube that cube. It's the shapes type. Uh, so if I, to do that in a different way, if I do like uh, get type, that should work. Uh, it'll return shapes, which isn't a string. Uh, seems to be some encoding things going on there, so... <laughs> some stuff. Beta. Beta. But anyway, uh, the idea here is we are going to implement this as a converter. So unless you provide an explicit converter, like we're doing here, so uh, effectively, this is going to be the fallback. So if there is, if you give it an enum type and there is no converter defined, it will automatically convert it for you. So you don't need to do all of this for each enum type. It's just automatic. So to do that, let's go into core and create a new converter. So this is going to be our string to enum converter which will automatically convert things to our enum type. This is going to be a little bit difficult because we aren't going to actually know of the enum type. Uh, what do we call it? We call it the i converter, i data converter, which converts strings. Ah, we don't have system. Okay, so it's going to convert a string to a enum. That was kind of concerning. Oh wait, d does that actually work? Oh, if this actually works, that's fantastic. Sweet. Ha, <laughs> cool. So we don't need to do any of that fun stuff. This gets a lot easier. So taking the source, uh, the type is going to be just the type of uh, string. Uh, we need to actually return that. This is not going to work. And then we'll do the same thing for our target type, which is just going to be any enum. So uh, I don't think we're going to be able to just plug this in. We can try. But uh, currently we only match explicit types. Uh, so like strings will not match something that's derived from a string. Uh, and theoretically anything derived from an enum is not identified either, but we're gonna, we're gonna try. 
So this is the hard part, this convert function, because it doesn't, it, the way we have our interface defined, we don't have enough information to actually make this conversion. Uh, the, the issue is we need to know what type of enum we're casting it to, and we don't. So, I don't really know what we're going to do here. The, I'm thinking we can do, uh, is this a good idea? This doesn't seem like a good idea. Hmm. String to enum. Part of me wants to just ignore the uh, data converter interface entirely and just kind of hard code this, but that makes it kind of hard to extend in the future. And I think we're going to want to do that. So I'm thinking we're going to add a setter here for the target type. So like this becomes, uh, is this a good idea? This seems like a questionable idea, but it's, it's this should work. Uh, so we're going to need a private type target uh, and that's going to have to a type of enum so it's got to extend the enum type uh, that's not actually supported never mind <laughs> can't do generic types okay doing some java stuff that's not a that's not allowed <laughs> uh, we're gonna hard code this initially to just enum so that matches uh, and we are going to kind of have to shoo this in a little bit because we can't just put this in our list. I don't think that's going to work. We want this like afterwards. And if we're changing this target type, it may be a bit difficult. Oh, th that this could be bad. Let's do target equals value. What? <laughs> Oh, that doesn't work. So can we, can I do that? We can't override uh, the set because there's no set to override here. So this won't work. Instead, we're going to need a new one. Public uh, type. Let's convert to a... I don't know. What's a good name for this? The conversion enum type that's a bit of a mouthful but it'll work I really would wish that you don't collapse those but okay <laughs> and then we'll just do git return the target and set the target equal to the value uh, and so by doing this we lose the advantage of being able to use the interface we can still use it for all the conversion and stuff and we can kind of plug it in at the end uh, but we're, we, we're going to need this for the actual, actual selection because this has to be set before we hit the convert. If it isn't, it's not going to work. Which kind of makes this like a two-part function, which I don't really like. Uh, so I'm going to not do that. We're going to stick a to-do in here. And this is just for my knowledge so that I know to go back and fix this because this is going to bug me otherwise, and it's just technical debt we don't need. Uh, but implement to argument converter or convert function. Uh, and I might just do that on my own time. It's not too much work. It's just more than we need to do here. So now that we have that, all we need to do is get the enum and return it. Uh, so we can just return enum dot parse. Uh, we need the type, which we already have. I can just use a conversion enum type. That works. And then the source. Yeah. To type enum. So this doesn't work because that returns an object. Okay. Got it. Makes sense. 
let's just set this as an object then. So this is gonna match a whole bunch of things, uh, which <laughs> this definitely means we can't put this uh, where I was going to put it. Uh, and I actually, quick test. Uh, type of shapes is equal to type of enum. I don't think that's going to work. False. Okay. Dot is subclass of. So we're going to see if our. Yeah, if our shapes is a subclass of enum, and it is. Okay, so that makes sense. So we actually can use enum here. Pardon the crazy, but enum. There we go. I stop. <laughs> cool. And so theoretically, that doesn't break anything. So this cast to an enum will not break it. Kind of concerned about that, but we'll, it, it should be fine. I may eat those words in a second, but anyway, that's all we need for this. That handles our parser. Now we go here to our command discovery. And what I want to do is this is attempting to parse things. So for each argument type, if the argument is equal to the type, then we do all of that fun stuff. Uh, otherwise, or if it's not, then we just add it. Otherwise we do the conversion here. Yeah, we're iterating over the arguments and trying to find a converter. So What's the best way to do this? We could, we could do this in a number of ways. There's the, hmm. So if we hit this, then we convert. Uh, actually, we can do it down here because here we are attempting to convert. It's something that we need to convert. So if the parameters is equal to the argument type, so if it doesn't need conversion, we're good. Otherwise it needs conversion. If this fails, if we do not find, didn't find any available converters, then we can do if uh, parameter type is a subclass of uh, the type of enum, so if it's an enum type and there were no registered converters, then we can take this and parse it. So I'm going to, this is kind of getting a little bit gross. This whole command discovery thing. We need to rework this whole thing. Oh, that's not how you spell private, but it, for now this works an enum string to enum converter. Do an enum converter and just create it right away because it, it'll just work. Cool. If we need to do that, if our type we're attempting to convert to, because this parameter type is going to be the parameter type we're expecting. So if that's what we're doing, then I need to take the enum converter, set this equal to the parameter type like so, and then return enum converter dot convert on our argument. And that should get us our enum type. So let's make sure this compiles. Uh, yes, cool, awesome, does. So 
the next thing we need to do, well, not really the next thing, but I'm just going to take this out. So if we uh, don't press that, oh, don't, don't do that either. There we go. Cool. So effectively, I've just taken this class out. I've commented the entire thing out. It shouldn't exist. And forgot to take it out here. Cool. So we, that's totally an empty list. I uh, thinking about that. That can come back and it can just be commented out here. And it will actually say what we're doing. So I'm going to add a log statement here, converting with uh, automatic enum converter. And so this message, if we see it, we know that we converted it with our enum converter instead of any of our built in ones. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, I guess, if we do spawn primitive uh, test, and sphere. We should get another sphere called test. So, and we do. Awesome. So it seems to be working. I should be able to uh, primitive. Uh, let's make a cube. Uh, first, we have to spell it right. Spawn primitive test cube. Awesome. So this is working and we can actually create things based off of enums and this should work on any enum type, not the, not just these primitive types, uh, but this is enough to actually get us started. We don't need to prove it beyond this because we know we're converting with our enum converter. So as long as we have an enum now, we can convert to it and actually pass it in. We don't need any other explicit converter. So even if you write your own enum in your own code, this now supports it without you having to do anything. And interestingly, uh, you can actually do a little bit more <laughs> than just that. You can actually, so just to kind of give an example, this also works. So I can say uh, type or enum.parse type of shapes. Uh, let's parse one. And that gets us a cube because cube has the value of one. So this doesn't just look at the name. Uh, interestingly, I believe it's case sensitive. Oops. <laughs> so yeah, this throws an exception, which we haven't actually tested yet. Spawn primitive test uh, triangle. Triangle was not found, uh, which actually that kind of that almost makes sense. So cool. So we get we get the argument exception, but that's beyond the point. Uh, we can make it cap sensitive or not cap sensitive later. That's an easy fix. The cool thing. Uh, let's see if this works. Can I do cube and a circle. So I numbered these one, two, four and eight for a reason. It means we can actually use them as flags. Uh, let me actually designate this as a flags uh, enum. And so by doing this, the only thing that this changes, it doesn't actually change anything in the code behind or anything like that. It has no effect in your compiled code besides the fact that when you try to print out these, instead of printing like three, if I do a cube in a circle, it would print cube and circle. So theoretically, if I run this, I get circle and cube. Cool. Uh, and just to kind of demonstrate that, if I do print uh, console dot print line, that's again wrong. But if I do that and then do a shapes dot cube and or it with a shapes uh, circle. Now let's actually do a sphere because we did circle last time. Cool. So if I do that, I get a cube and a sphere. Great. But if I actually remove this flags and run this again, I get five. And so that's that's what that's doing there. Uh, so 
handy little debugging tip. But there you go. We can convert enum types. And it's easy. Uh, it's not the best implementation. I need to go back and kind of split everything out again. We might just do like a live stream or something where I do that. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, this is probably going to be a fairly big project because the next thing is we're going to need a lexer and a parser. And those are going to take some time because uh, I don't really have a syntax language designed for this yet. It's just allowing you to execute a single command. Uh, and there is some other fun things, like what if I wanted to spawn a primitive of a triangle and then translate its position to uh, like 0, 10, 0, and do something else and so forth. All of that is, isn't supported yet. There's no way to, to do that. And especially if I want to like evaluate it, for example, and say it's equal to the sign of, I don't know, 60 times four, uh, it's going off the screen, but anyway, you, you get the idea. We can't do this right now. There's no idea what I just tried to tell it to do. That's coming up. And it's going to be a little bit interesting because it, it's been a while since I've done any of that. So that's on the horizon. Uh, if there's anything else you guys want to suggest or ideas you have, uh, we're kind of just building this in the Discord channel. I kind of throw ideas around and we kind of discuss them. Uh, there's a GitHub page where all of the code for this project is. So if you guys want to actually download this shell and use it in your projects, go for it. It's a little bit rough right now, as you can probably tell. There's a lot missing, but it's it's getting there. So yeah, if you guys have feedback on these videos or how I can improve them, let me know in the comments because I'd, I'd love to make them better. Uh, but that's it for this one. So until next time, see you, internet.